Hello and welcome to THL's Monday Madness. This is the creative, competitive, and intriguing show where we have fascinating things going on, such as starting an hour late. But, you know, <laughs> things like that happen sometimes. And uh, we are good to go, and we've got some awesome people here with us today. Um, I'd like to introduce my last-minute co-caster. Welcome, Josh Sampson, and thank you for being here. Yeah, very glad to be here, guys. Happy to happy to jump on. Awesome. Thank you for uh, being here with me, man. And uh, we've got two fantastic people here representing the uh, polar opposites of gender. Uh, we have um, initially our friend Gemini. How are you this evening, Gemini? Um, I'm here. <laughs> Finally, I'm here. But I'm good. But I'm fantastic. really good. Awesome. Are you, uh, are you looking forward to the challenges we have tonight? It's, it's definitely going to be a challenge for sure. Um, it was interesting preparing for this, but uh, I think the superior class will uh, reign supreme. Ooh. Oh, yes. All right. And uh, who have we got in the man cave over there? The groom gamer. And how are you doing tonight? I'm doing just fine. What's on uh, your face? It'd be my bandana. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and are you looking forward to what's going on here, Grim? Of course. Awesome. Well, we are happy to have you. Uh, we're also happy to have a show, and that's thanks to Nade. So thank you, Nade, for running the stream and uh, being as awesome as you always are. Oh, yeah. It's the least now I let me do. uh let me give you a quick rundown of what our first challenge is going to be. All right, so we are going to do something we've done before. So some of you who are repeat viewers may know what this is. We're doing a reverse draft. So the way this is going to work is we're going to start with Gemini, and she's going to choose a class. That class must be played by the Grim Gamer. Then it's going to go over to Grim. He's going to choose two classes. Those classes must be played by Gemini. She'll choose his final two, and then he'll choose her final one. Uh, and then what's going to end up is they're going to have six totally different classes that they've picked for each other, so they're going to be kind of sabotage picks. Um, so... I think we're going to see a absence of several tier one decks, which should be awesome. So, um, is there any final words, players slash co-caster slash host, have for the stream before we get started? Let's do this. Good luck. Yeah, for sure. Good luck. All right. Well, uh, why don't you uh, deafen yourselves, cut the, uh, cut the Skype sound, and mute your mics, and. Get going. How do you foresee this draft going? Do you have any predictions regarding um, what the picks are going to be? Do you think that uh, Jam and I is going to start out here by just throwing Priest straight to the Grim Gamer? Can't hear you, Josh Sampson. So if you're talking, you may have to unmute yourself. Yep, I'm still here. We're good. Uh, I think it's draft's going to be interesting, um, for sure. I think it's going to matter a lot in, down the line. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, so we've seen some interesting things here. I mean, obviously you would assume players would... But occasionally it doesn't happen. Occasionally you see classes like Hunter, which are very good classes, um, or in the past you've seen, uh, given when you're not really afraid of that class because say you're running uh, or you've already been drafted in an aggressive lineup, you're like, okay, you can have Hunter. I don't really care about that. I'll just run him over. So you'll see really interesting things going on. I think last time we even saw a warrior given um, when somebody was running a uh, very control heavy. Um, all right. We are just waiting on the first pick from Gemini, which we should be getting very shortly. And then we'll be uh, seeing this very grim man making his pick. All right, I believe it is there. Has it been locked in? Let's see here. All right, and it is Rogue. So first class given to the Grim Gamer is Rogue. Josh, how do you feel about that? 
Um, I think it's definitely an interesting pick. Uh, if you're trying to force your opponent into playing specific decks uh, with some of the requirements, such as like creature count and things. Forcing them into rogue is definitely a. Uh, I mean, it makes some sense. Okay. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think that there's definitely a merit to giving rogue. I think rogue is a very polarizing class. Um, so now it is the gamer, um, who is going to pick two classes that Gemini must play. Um, and this is interesting. Um, he locks these in. This is very interesting because this is not what I would expect at all. But he seems to have a game plan. Um, let's just wait for confirmation here. Um, but this is, if if so, this is absolutely what I was not expecting. Oh, maybe he's got some real spice lined up for us. All right, it is Druid and Hunter from the Grim Gamer given to Gemini. I would say I would be very happy to receive those classes. What do you think, Josh? Um, I mean, if you look through those classes, uh, there's not you, you. You're forcing her into like a more aggressive archetypes, I think. Let's go to hand though. And so if, you're, if your game plan is, I'm going to give my opponent the aggressive archetypes and then I'm going to play more mid-rangey things, because a lot of the, the female characters in Hunter specifically are all, like, secret-based. Yeah, I'm going to stop you there. We're not on to the uh, male versus female yet. So nope. that will be the second half of the show. For now, these are absolute standard decks. This is just a draft out and play. Uh, I'm going to kind of follow the same logic, though. I think those classes are very aggressive, and your, your game plan is, let's... Let's uh, let's just force every one of her archetypes into more aggressive. Joycement from the Grim Gamer as he is given Priest. I know it's the Priest. I know he's happy to have the Priest. He is the Lord of the Meme Priest. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I'm excited. I, I expect some Yogs. Why did you have game. to say Yogg? <sighs> Why did you have to say Yogg? See, I was excited. And then you said Yogg. <laughs> I'll, just... I'll, pra I'll praise the Yogg. Oh, fuck that, dude. Fuck Yogg. All right. Well, yes. We were a little preemptive, but we were pretty sure that the, that priest was going to be locked in. So priest and shaman is given to Grim Gamer. Uh, and he's very happy to have the priest. Interesting. Wow. I would not have given that class, but okay. He... Ooh. Now, he could change it. He, he may change it, but I think he's locking this in. Uh, okay, here. Just waiting a second to double check. <sighs> Thinking about it. Okay, it's through. Warlock is given to Gemini. Wow, this is interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, and I think I think if you're looking at the the classes that Grim Gamer is giving to Gemini, he he's putting her on playing low to the ground aggressive decks and is just hoping to get all of the I'm just gonna board wipe your your board every turn decks, and he's just trying to play the the controly grindy game, which is an interesting strategy coming from Grim. It is interesting. Um... <sighs> I don't know how I feel about it tactically. I mean, the hunter, I can understand. The druid, less so, but I guess there there are ways. But giving her warlock, I just, I would be really scared of getting blown up by Sue. Really scared. Um, yes, uh, I agree, hundred um, percent. And paladin was still on the table. Now he he's playing priest. The Shaman's really strong. Rogue, Priest, and Shaman. I think Rogue is easily the uh, weakest link there. Um, I think that... I honestly think that uh, Gemini had a really good draft. Um, and though I question a little bit the Shaman, uh, otherwise, I think that uh, I think that was really well done. But Grim was very concise about his picks. So he seems to have a game plan. So that's that's the one saving grace in his side, I think. Yep, I I concur. 
All right, looks like we are getting into it. I'm popping in the spectates. As am I. All right, and let's get our best of five started with a rogue versus druid. And again, this will be the druid on the side of Gemini and the rogue on the side of the grim gamer. Now, let's see here. Uh, can't see Grimm's side of the mulligan, but I can see Gemini's, and has a beast druid lined up. Ooh, and, and that's a super hyper aggressive rogue. It looks yeah. like with pirates and all sorts of fun fun shenanigans from from the gamer. Okay. Yeah, I think we're gonna have some special tactics coming out here for sure, and uh, I I can't wait to see. Yep, spectate. Might be a sec delay. There we go. All right. Oh my wolf rider! What the fuck is that? Ho ho. Um. Okay. Yeah, wolf rider like double cold blood get you. I'm all about it. <laughs> wow, these saplings are gonna really sap that uh, tempo that Grim's going for though. Oh yes. Yeah, I, I can see it not being as bad if you like coin hero powers and just. Yeah, it's really going to be a case of can he stick these things on the board and can he get multiple swings out of them? Because if he can get two swings off of cold blood, I think he takes the game. But doing that is a challenge. Yep, absolutely. I'm refreshing my client. It's being unresponsive. All right, well, then I will take over. Here we're seeing Gemini examining her options here with a Druid of the Saber, a Mark of Yasharaj, an Enchanted Raven, and an Inner. Ah, uh, we're so, back. Right. So what you can do here is you can innervate out the Mark of Yasharaj, but I think holding that is wise. I think she wants to save that for a bigger tempo increase. And generally the way I look at innervate, besides being a way to, you know, tempo something out on the board real fast is just a way to fix your curve. If you have a dead turn where you're you normally wouldn't be playing anything, that's when you play the innervate. Um, Absolutely. So this loot hoarder is going to be semi-punished. Yeah. That's an early Menagerie Warden. So, hmm. Do you think that there's any merit in keeping this Panther stealthed and innervating the Warden next turn? Or would you go for an innervate Raven paying play here? Um, I like playing the, like, keeping it stealth and just playing a Raven and passing. Okay, yep, that's good and too. And then innervating the, the Warden next turn and just having two 5-4s. Well, are you going to get those 5-4s though? Because you're giving Rogue a turn to do something with something on the board. I don't put the it chance of the 5-4 surviving it very high. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you're also playing the 2-2 two -two and the 5-4 is stealth, though... It's not stealth anymore. Uh, well, like, I'm talking saying previous to your turn. I liked just, like, playing the Raven in next turn, like, and keeping the 5-4 the stealth. So not attacking. Yeah, just not attacking at all. Fair enough. Okay. Um, well, that's a face-down card. Oh, let me respectate. Blizzard has just done a fantastic job with the spectating system except for times like this and in those times it's not quite so fantastic oh just the delay josh you, can you see what that card that was drawn by uh, gemini is well now we can see it it's jungle panther and that's a good pull it's a good pull for sure um Interesting. So see, this is the uh, this is the problem I was seeing from this rogue deck is I'm a little bit afraid of this happening where the opponent just is slightly more efficient, takes the board, and you just can't get that presence. Like that's what I was saying. If you can get two swings in with one of your aggressive minions, you could t steal the game. Yeah, no, just... like, th this turn I like just, like, attacking the Raven, playing the Juggler, and playing both Buccaneers. Uh, there's only one Buccaneer. I thought there was two. Nope, oh, there is only one. Yeah, he's uh... playing a Sinister Strike, though. 
Yeah, if you just buck your hero powers, that makes sense. And using his mana efficiently, assuming that... Which, if you look at the classes that Gemini gave him, she could very well could have Weapon Hate in her decks. She, she did give Shaman, which that would kind of explain that hmm. as well. Yeah, yeah, that'd be interesting. Okay, so we have the option of Innervating the Menagerie Warden. Unfortunately, it's not quite on curve. And that swipe's not a great draw either. Um, but she's very close to killing the Grim Gamer. Um, she can put him to 11, get a stealth 4 2, which is going to put him down to a 7. And then she's got 4 damage off that swipe. So, ooh, interesting. She's choosing to play it slow. Um, remove the guy. And looks like she is going to go face with this panther. And this gives the Grim Gamer a chance to come back into it. Yeah, absolutely. She. Oh, it looks like he's rejoicing. He is rejoicing at that backstab draw. And he's probably just going to slam the juggler wolf rider. And... Yeah, the client's still breaking on me. I didn't even see the backstab draw, but I see him doing things, so... Okay, yeah, he's he's certainly doing things. He's starting his push. Um, and he's going at a pretty good pace. Um, and uh, we have a lovely face-down face, uh, face down card drawn by me. No, uh, no problem. <laughs> All right. There's, uh, there's a chance that a light may be turned on in the man cave. Um, I think that almost breaks breaks some of it, but we do what chat demands, and now it is the uh, now it is the doorway to heaven with a grim gamer. Yeah, he's being aggressive here, and I like it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's that's a lot of aggression. Um, so is Gemini. That swipe to the face was a lot of pressure. And if she can land this menagerie board on something, she's in good shape. Mm. Just reloading my spectator. All right. Mark of Yasharaj and an Azure Drake. Ooh, this is interesting. So he's actually. Put her under a lot of pressure, and he's got 10 damage from hand, which means, okay, that is good. She definitely needs to get this thing off the board. That was such a lucky draw, and Grim Gamer's over there, like, freaking out. Oh, man. All right, watch this oh, top of blood. That was bad, man. Oh, no! Oh, no! She has oh, to intervene here. Oh, oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> The Grim Gramer, arms up in the air. Oh no! Innervate the hero power! No! Oh no! What a lethal. Top lethal anyway. Let's see if he memes her more, and it does it with the living roots to show yes, off. He's doing the yeah, good. Oh, he's doing Grim. <laughs> the fuck is that crap, man? <laughs> All right. Well. Welcome to Monday Madness, folks. For those of you who are just joining us, we are playing a uh, best of five reverse draft right here where um, our players are given the opportunity to uh, kind of sabotage draft their opponents. Um, the Grim Gamer uh, gave Gemini Druid, Hunter, and Warlock. So she's playing those classes, and she gave to him to play um, Priest, Shaman and Rogue. Um, let's see here. Alrighty then. So we are now going to the second game. This is a 1 0 lead for the Grim Gamer. And, uh. Alright. Just resolving a technical element. But yeah. 1 0 lead for the Grim Gamer. Was it warranted? Should he have gotten that win? Who knows? But he pulled it out of his ass, and he did it like the meme he is, and we'll congratulate it for him. Him for it for him. Why do they let me host again? Anyway, 
Um, All right, I'm back. So, John, moving into game two. Have you seen the deck? Do you think that Gemini will choose to queue it in again? Um, so, Grim is left with Shaman and Priest, correct? Um, if you need the last, I assume. Like, <sighs> yeah, I'm just thinking. Like, it, it's it's tough. I would probably I would queue it up again. Spicy secret keeper hunter. Very. I like it. It's a fun deck that came out right at the beginning when, uh, of uh, the new set coming out when Huntress came out. And you're playing like eight secrets in the deck, so Secret Keeper gets big really quick. Yeah, especially if you can get a, get a Cloaked Huntress out on the board with. Whew. Well, we see a Snipe, which... Against this hand, so we see a Murgleton. No, that's not a Murgleton. That's a Tunnel Truck. That's a Truck. Just that. I thought it was Truck. I don't really see much follow up. Ooh, interesting. I would have Queen Lightning bolted there. It's close, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I see definitely why you'd want to do that, but I, I understand the wanting to wait for um, more relevant targets value play here of the uh, Feral Spirit, um, especially considering that uh, you would still have the Lightning Bolt to play on the following turn, and the yeah. Abuse of Bolts just thrown. Um, so now he has a secret to contend with, and I don't think he'll expect this to be sniped, because currently no signs have been given that this is anything standard mid-range or hybrid hunter. I wouldn't be surprised if he attacked first before uh, playing the Feral Spirits. Solely to play around like explosive trap. Now, which is attacking the face or try and clear the spell, uh, fiery bat. He's... Interesting. That's a snipe that is very good for the Grim Gamer. It's healthy. Slightly awkward, but it ended up working out anyway. Let's see if this is a huffer. Always huffer? Nope. I suspect a lava burst in the future. My is my Skype cutting out? Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Oh, okay. All right. Just had a report of uh, some cutting going on. Well, let's hope that that doesn't happen anymore. All right, we're looking at a Feral Spirit play here. How do you feel about this play? I think in the Shaman deck, you want to be more slightly more aggressive. I, I see why he's like he's holding onto the Lava Burst to go face with it later on. Yeah. But being able to keep, get the, the Beast off the board, I think, is so important in this matchup. Yeah, because he could have curved it come back there. Right, because if he would have just played a, uh, a Houndmaster there, or if... Yeah, Gemini would have just played a Houndmaster there. He would have been super punished. Right. But I think what she did is pretty spectacular. Um, and yep. the chances of that being a second snipe are astronomically low. So if he had a snipe vulnerable minion, uh, he'd definitely be playing right into it. But thankfully, uh, as seems to be the case quite a bit, uh, the Grim Gamer... Is uh, has made a pact with Arn Jesus, his lord and savior, to always have fortune in his favor when it comes to being sniped. I wonder if that applies to his stream or not. And there's the confusion. Ooh. And you really see it on his face. Oh, man, that is just rough, man. I mean, he gets the battle cry and sneaks by that snipe. And and this is this is why we see um, some problems with the secret hunter is that it just has these cases where it just the secrets don't quite get the value. But that is a hell of a discovery. Um, yep. Or er, joust. 
Exactly That's what Gemini and I wanted. Good stuff. Though we do know now, from the Grim Gamer's point of view, we know what that is. So he has the ability here to just drop the rock biter, make the trade, or even throw out the rock I biter. Love burst. Right. Because he knows that the only card in Gemini's hand is a Hellmaster. So I might even value playing both the Lava Burst and the Rock Biter here in order to keep your Tunnel Trog on the board with no answer to it. Uh, and he will keep it. Ooh. There's a quick shot. And oh my god, he's, she's going to draw from it. Wow. That's insane. So good. Yeah, just super punished for not... Dealing with the beast. Damn. That is rough, man. She says, Fuck your shenanigans. I'm not dying to another one of your goddamn cheesy aggro decks. Fucking warden <laughs> infiltrator. What is this meme? This is hilarious. No way. Is this going to happen again? There's the high main in hand just to seal the deal. And Agro Shaman is making totems. You know that that is not a good sign. Absolutely. And he is on just such lower health. And he lava bursted the King's Alec. There, I don't know what sort of god draws need to come from, from Grim Gamer to win this from here. But it doesn't yeah. look likely. He's choosing to play the high main over dropping the bow. Um, now, if he had bowed, he would have been able to hero power and bow, which would have put, uh, or she would have, my bad, uh, put, put him to five, put him dead to bow and hero power. And that's a case where you are not, um, you're not winning if he taunts, which is a 50-50 off the hero power, um, and also can come from feral spirits or a, um, fringe defender of Argus. So, I don't know. Given the 50 50 on the hero power, actually. Yeah, at this point, Grim is just so low on cards. And there's another Hyming from Gemini. Oh man, this game is just locked and sealed at this point. Just dead, though. Just super dead. Play the bow and hero power. Disgusting. Uh, the Grim Gamer giving giving her the applause. There's the victory cheer! And down he goes. Get punished! I knew that Hunter was going to make the showing. And uh, did so in an impressive fashion. Alright, so we're at 1-1. One, one. Where are we going from here? I think the Grim Gamer is going to bring some, some Yogg Priests. Now, he does still have to win with this Aggro Shaman deck. Yeah. Um, Hunter is out of the way. Now, Hunter is actually a very good matchup for Shaman, so him losing that is not good for him. Um, and he is left up against that Beast Druid, which is already seen, and the Warlock. Now, the Warlock scares me, man. I know yeah, what his strategy is. Have that. I don't know, because if you look at the decks that he brought, that doesn't look like a good matchup ever in any of the deck lists he's brought so far. And that is the last one that he brought. Yeah, I don't have his deck list here. And there it is. Uh, there's the zoo, and uh, it's... Well, it's Zoo. That's absolutely <laughs> bonkers. And uh, it looks like the Grim Gamer likes to play with fire. He's crossing his fingers for that mulligan, and he's he's okay with it. But it's not what you need against a Zoo Lock. Maybe he thought she didn't have a Zoo Lock, and that he'd be able to kill a Hand Lock. But that's not the case. Huh, do you think this might be a discard lock with that soul fire? Or do you think it's just the one of soul fire tossed in there? It's hard to say. There's, I mean, so many lists 
before the discard lock came out were running that one of Soulfire. So if it was any other discard, I'd put it on it, but not this time. I agree. Um, but it w doesn't put it outside the realm of possibility. Oh, man. If there was ever a time that I agreed with Soulfire being played in a zoo deck, because I don't run one on my list, it is absolutely right now as being able to soul fire off that totem golem is just nuts. Yep, I agree. She's not going to do She's she not going to take it? Oh no. No, what are you doing? She still wants the Argus play. She still wants that Argus play. Um mm. I guess that there is I mean just some to merit to it, I guess. Yeah, there's so much tempo gained. Yes. The nice thing about Soul Firing would have been that you had the uh, leeway to discard either Possessed Villager and just play the other one. Um, right. And maybe she's afraid of throwing out the Argus because she really thinks that'll get her a lead. And the Grim Gamer is going face, so this allows her to Argus up and clear off. Oh, it is discard lock. That's why she's safe. Yeah, definitely discard lock at this point. Yeah. Um. So I think at this point you are going to try and cast the Doom Guard instead of the Soul Fire. Um, how do you feel about these trades? Just um, I'm thinking. You just, I mean, it seems yeah. fine to me. Yeah, that, and then the four three into the three. Yeah. I'd, I'd use the four three to kill the Trog. Kill the, the Trog. Yeah. Oh, and she opts for neither. Face. Face is the place. I, I get the feeling that uh, she's really. Gonna regret yeah. that for a second? Yeah. No, I don't know about that. I'm saying she's she's just tired of the Grim Gamer's bullshit and just wants to end <laughs> him. Fair. Yeah, I mean, this now lets him trade the Trog for the Imp and then keep his Totem Golem alive as well as play, yeah, by playing the 7-7 seven, seven here. Yeah. So there, there's a punish for sure on not clearing that Tunnel Trog as, uh, now it trades the same target. That's a good draw for, for Gemini. Yep. Yep, definitely. Um, now, the question here is, what is your game plan for dealing with this? I think what we might end up seeing is a peddler play the peddler card soul fire just hope you hit that silverware golem because if you do you're in a great spot yeah it's not and good. if you don't then you lose the doom guard I, like i definitely like leading with the uh with the peddler here yeah. and seeing what other one drop you get Ooh, interesting choosing to play the yeah. tap instead i'm a little bit worried about how greedy gem is being here with this deck how do you feel about this choice? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that makes makes sense. The, she doesn't really want a second Soulfire. Making the trade with the Argus. Uh, Hero Power Worgen to start pressing face. This lets him Doomhammer next turn. I think Grim is in a great spot. Yeah. Um, this game definitely has gone in his favor. Now she's looking at hard casting his Doom Guard on curve. So there's. Ooh, that's that's kind of nasty. Well, shit happens. Um, I guess we're going all face with this. I mean. You just don't want you don't want to trade in there. Yeah, she has to she has to just go for the win here and hope that I mean it's it's tough. It's definitely tough. She's making the trade. He's satisfied. So yeah, I mean there is definitely an element of experience when it comes to piloting zoo, and that may have been honestly why he chose to give it to her. Maybe it's a deck she's not very comfortable with. There's definitely a history between these players that I know of. I don't, I don't right. know it specifically, but uh, maybe this is a case where he said, okay, I know that you're uncomfortable with zoo. I'm going to give you zoo. Or block. And I think I can do with uh, 
my aggregate, which he seems to be right now. Um, and there is no out uh, at all. Yep, this is nope, Grim's he's game. just dead. Yep. So Grim is going to take the third game in the series here. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so, and, and these, these are fives he's playing, so guys in the chat, if you're giving him shit, don't do it. Just don't worry about it. I mean, we were all here at some point, and this is, uh, this is just as much of a learning opportunity as any. Um, playing against Agro Shaman is tough to do. You definitely have to really navigate and know the dichotomy of pressure to when to go face and when to make those trades, and it's tough. So I don't I don't blame Gemini at all for losing there. That's that's definitely a tough one to pilot. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I think that was a well played game by Grim. And I'm excited to see uh, see. It makes sense. Her play this comeback here. I, th I think it definitely it makes sense. And they. All right. So. Shaman is taking this win. The Grim Gamer is preparing to unleash his secret weapon. Here comes the priest. All right, so is he going to play aggro priest or is he going to play yog priest? Because it's one of the two, knowing Grim. Aggro priest? Certainly. Have you not seen his other decks he played tonight? <laughs> Certainly would be on fame, but... We will see. Um, bringing back the druid. Again, and honestly, at this point, she has to... This looks like... A real priest deck for as real as priests can actually be. That looks bog fucking sick. What's that? Is he trying to show us something? Something drawn on there. <laughs> One second. <laughs> oh man. I think both of these. Yeah. Yes. Uh oh. And then does he play the second Northshire here or does he power word? He, he opts for the power word. Yeah, I like that. This turn is kind of awkward for Gemini because you, you obviously don't want to swipe a Northshire cleric. Either you're over your back on top of your deck. Yeah, this is a, a funky hand on her side, which... I mean, this is what the Grim Gamer was looking for, this priest. He was looking to abuse um, a dead draw off of one of these classes. And innervating a swipe, killing Northshire Cleric? <sighs> Honestly, it might be the play that she needs to make to get into this game. He's not going to make it, and I don't blame her at all. That's a terrifyingly ugly play, but we'll be just taking these one ones out. But his hand's not too good either. Uh, and then an innervated... Yeah, also also slightly awkward. I, I like playing just the second Northshire here. Oh, he's opting to draw. And unfortunately, Gemini didn't have the combatant last turn. Yeah, but that's... Next turn that's not or even choosing to play the uh Druid of the Law here, which is in the attack dead instead of the Alright. I'm getting a bad mic report. Can you hear me okay? Yep, I got you just fine. Now it's good. Well that's good. Um Welcome to the exhibit as Grim Gamer draws a on curve play. Bravo, bravo. Um, but I was saying, how do you feel about playing this Druid of the Claw over a Stranglethorn Tiger? Because the Stranglethorn Tiger would give you a clean kill on that Cleric. Interesting. Ooh, is she going to opt for the swipe here? Okay, she really wants rid of it. Um, going to just leave that one one up and start applying pressure. Seems good. Seems good. Uh, let's see it's what. It's an interesting line for sure. 
Yeah, let's see what the Grim Gamer has in store for us here. I expect some Barnes action. Will it be the meme dream machine? <laughs> yeah, because the shifting shade is super awkward here, especially if Gemini happens to have a wrath. Okay. Which she does. Night. 1-1 one, one Harrison. Oh, that's it is, yeah, it's not, not something that's super needed in this matchup, so it's all right. Oh, no. The Doom play is here. The fuck? Brunson's, Brunson's favorite class. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't have Twitch up right now, but Brunson, if you were there. Oh, man. I, I, Hold I, out. Just called out. I think that this man is calling you out, Brunson. You may got you guys may have to play. Ooh, the Grim Gamer versus Brunson. Priest versus Rogue. Now I could watch that. Now how do you feel here about her choosing to clear? Now she is rewarded. Uh, but only marginally. I Personally, uh, fade. Oh, she's going face. Angle very interesting. Been what I would putting Grim in a very awkward spot right here. Not if he has a death, which uh, he doesn't. Yeah. Uh, but if he did, this would be um, a large amount of Gemini's board presence just snap gone. But now the Grim Gamer. Not having either of his deaths, they're both in the. Uh, yeah, I mean, he has to just play the alchemist here, and just heal and just probably just pass. Because if he can entomb the. Uh, okay, the so you can next turn. You can also holy nova and clear up these one ones. Yeah, it depends. It's just all a matter of how scared he is of uh, Savage Roar. Slightly weak in the copy that is given by Menagerie Warren, but oh gosh. This is just insane. Wow. Six and that is going face. She says, now is the time for vengeance, Grim Gamer. I will lose no more to your bullshit. Here come the bears. Yeah, this this does not look good for the Grim. You could say it's looking a bit... Grim? Grim. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. I had to take it. So, how do you feel about Gemini's plays coming up? Because she has a couple of different options. She can Combatant, smack him for three. She can Tiger, smack him for one. She can Tiger, charge him for two. Or Grim or will just concede. Gamer could just concede. <laughs> you know, that's a thing, too. Um, <laughs> that was unexpected. The unexpected memes from the Grim. All right. 2-2. Two, two. In this best of five series, again, this is... For those of you just joining us, this is the Clash of the Classes. Nope, that's a different one. This is the reverse draft. <laughs> Um, this is the reverse draft where our players chose in sequence the lineups for their opponent. Um, so in the case of the Grim Gamer, uh, the last deck which he gave to Gemini that is left over is the Warlock. And the last deck which the Grim Gamer was given is the Meme Dream Machine, the mortal enemy of Brunson. <laughs> Anduin Rin, priest. And uh, I'm real interested to see how this game goes because if any of you are uh, remember the priest, priest standard, there were certainly cases where it could wreck Zulocks. Um, but if it just draws dead and the Zulok gets a fast start, there's going to be nothing that Grim Gamer can do here. Do you want to make a prediction, Mr. Sampson, of how this will go down? Yeah, so uh, the Grim Gamer has priests, so I'm going to say Gemini is going to take this. 
Okay. Uh, has the game started for you yet? It has not. It says it is preparing. Yeah, it's uh, continuing to find me a good Hope seat, that, cooking my popcorn, and uh, finding my friend's table. Mm. Looks uh, like it's about to load up here. Yep. Well, it's continuing to uh, polish spectacles. There we go. We are in the final game and of the series. And we're in. Ooh, and this is a good starting hand for the Grim Gamer. And this is also a good starting hand for Gemini so far. Alcazar's Imp, a new card for the final wing of Karzan, was just released this Thursday. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is pretty cool. I'm interested to see what the zoo, uh, discard zoo lock can do. Yeah. Ooh, that flash heal lock and I as well. Flash heal being useful f against this matchup in multiple ways. Okay, so if we see a... Straight Cleric with no shield is going to be punished, so he absolutely has to play that shield. But, I would not want to use my coin up to play a shield. Right. So. He, he, he opted to do it last time, so I expect him to do it again. Yep. And it, it will cycle him into more plays, uh, so he could be hoping to rip another one of these curators or uh, some such play. Yeah, absolutely. It's slow. And that's a pretty good turn three, if you can chuck... No, it's not. A, you don't even need to chuck anything. You just need to Malkazar's Darkshire next to Just chuck a thing. Yep. And then you're negating the disadvantage and getting the death rattle uh, the librarian. I do quite like uh, Darkshire Librarian. I really think it's a, an elegantly designed card, and I, I love the synergy it has with Malkazar's Imp. It's absolutely one of the reasons that I somewhat think that uh, discard lock The void wall. There's there's a good draw for by Grim. Yeah, that pain is sick. So, ooh, now if if Gemini gets tempted by this imp gang boss, she's gonna get punished by a shadow word pain. She has to assume it's being run. She has the Malcazar's Darkshire play. She also has this PO play. Now, do you like playing the Imp and the Sergeant over this Librarian, given that you're playing the PO? Because I certainly like this play better. Yeah, I 100% I, I agree. This is right. So choosing to run over the Cleric. I don't know. Get Priest off the board. That's never a bad thing to do. Imp and the word pain target, but not really any high-value ones. Um, hmm. Yeah, this is an awkward turn for Grim. Um, I I could see like Northshire and then Shadow Word the the two two. Uh -huh. Yep. Yeah, I can see that. I can definitely see that. Now, if the Shadow Word comes out, are we seeing the Imp Gang boss from Gemini? I don't think so. I think I think Gemini is gonna want to get as much value out of her Imp as she can. Okay. Yeah, the net value off the. Um... Death We're seeing a heal pass. Grim is hoping to top deck a uh, oh! healing. The net value. Look at that. No, play the imp. Play the imp. Just do it, Gemini. You know what you need to do here. It's imp. She might. Yeah. Oh, no. She could just play both the imps here. Okay. That's and true. Then get but then if he does draw a circle of healing, she gets so punished. Oh, man. And the pain's going to land on that imp gang boss. So I, I think I would have gone with the librarian. But there is absolutely value in spending all your mana every turn and curving out. So we here casters like to see flashy things like Malkazar's imp happen. But from a statistical perspective, I totally understand that play. And um, there's definitely a degree of sense here. Yeah, no, Absolutely. I just wanted to see her draw a bunch of cards. Me too. <laughs> uh, turn four, for the Grim Gamer, a circle of healing is not drawn. That's a key card to dealing with Zoo, and uh, he's he's real disappointed not to have it. Now, getting but one of the first third would be yeah. lucky. Uh, the pain play is absolutely a good play, um, so he's not too dissatisfied with that. All right, uh, let's tap. 
Let's just have to see what we get here. Now, Gemini uh, has to decide if the power overwhelming is worth up in. Ooh. So I see a power overwhelming coming out, and then her actually waiting to play the Doom Guard next turn, and then drawing four cards. Would you really want to suicide one of your minions for that PO, though? I mean, I'd rather discard the PO than the Doom Guard. And if you do chuck the Doom Guard, then you can just play the PO. Or not. Now, don't hold back the Librarian. Show us some magic. Come on. It's what your deck's meant to do. She's trying to decide how lucky she feels. Yeah, she, so she's not going for the PO play. Oh, wow. Interesting. Playing really greedy here. Now walking right into a excavated evil, which, again, <laughs> the Grim Gamer just can't find these board clears, man. He's got a Holy Nova, so he can take care of the two threats in the middle. But it looks like he's choosing to go with a Priest of the Feast flash heal play on himself. I actually like this play. I think that's the, the correct line here. It get, gets pressure on the board and forces Gemini to, to do something with it. Yeah. Do you think we're going to see the Doom Guard played here? Uh, oh, I think so. I really hope so. If she didn't do, do the uh, Librarian last turn, I'd be very surprised if she doesn't. And this is going to be a massive net gain. Now, slight miss. Out of the sergeant. There we go. Um, oh, so many cards. Yes. Grim just sitting there shaking his hand, at, shaking his head as he should. The, just the apex of what discard law can do. It's insane situations where it just gets nuts value. And... That's because we've seen uh, a double drawn in the Malchazar's Imp and really put into a play very effectively. And uh, interesting and definitely paying off that uh, Gemini chose to really wait on playing that discard mechanic. Waited for the Doom Guard. It's going to take his whole turn to remove it. And she still has a board that's ready to able and able to attack. And she can drop a Dire Wolf to apply even more damage. She can tap. She can play sticky minions. This is yeah, like the fact that Grim hasn't serious. actually wrapped the board this entire game, and he's had a lot of opportunities too, I ex actually expect her to play out her entire hand and then get punished by the Holy Nova. That's true. But she can't play the whole thing, because uh, there's only so Uh He's giving hearts. Always tap last. <laughs> Uh, oh, man. A lot of pressure here. and um, She opts to not tap. Yeah. Ooh, really? I wonder if that was... Uh, yeah, that looks like uh, just forgetting to tap. Oh, well, it looks like she's uh, she's still quite ahead. Uh, this Holy Nova will be pretty good. Um, but there's still quite a bit left over on the board. She can get him to I 11. I would played the Northsire Cleric there. So all, all of the opponent's minions are now 1-1, one, one, so the Norse Hire Cleric just eats stuff. The value! The value! Discarding a worthless card for a direwolf. Oh, yes. A defender! Oh, man. That's an insane swing. Okay. Grim Gamer has a 1-9 in nine chance to rip a circle of healing. Excavating Evil also is very good here. How many copies does he run? We don't know. We saw one last game. If he has one copy, then he has a one in six chance to pull this board clear. If he has two copies, he has a uh, one in 4.5. Did he draw it? No, he didn't draw it. He's going for it, but it's not there. Oh, man. And I see the concede button coming very shortly. Oh, no. And it's the face pump. Uh, the sad thing is that a board clear here would have been a uh, absolute cleanup. But alas, there's no board clear. And that is the series. This is a win for Gemini and a loss for the Grim Gamer. All right, let's get these players back on the mics and uh, 
Let's see what they have to say about what just transpired. All right, Grim Gamer, Gemini, do we have you? Yep. All right. Gemini, are you here? Can we hear you? Can you hear us? Uh, Gemini, are you there? You here? I just sent her a message. Hopefully she gets it. And... Oh, we can't hear her. We can't hear you. Nope. You're currently muted. Better? There, there we you. go. All right. Hey, so... we got it. All right, let me uh, let me pose a question to our winner here. Um, Gemini, you have a history of playing against our friend Grim here on stream. You want right. to tell me about it a little bit? Um, <laughs> yeah, um, it, it was just an unfortunate situation. My internet sucked at the time, and uh, I got disconnected. And he took advantage of that situation. And, um... That was it. So would you say that this uh, was some glorious revenge? I'll just say that I did my best, and to the victor go the spoils. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, Grim Gamer, well said. this is not the end for you. You have another series. It's not There's the a end. best of three coming up. And how are you feeling coming off of this one, getting ready? L little tilted, but I got this. I'm sorry. Uh, so I have a question Don't be for sorry. I deserved it. I, I was stuck with Priest. We didn't know how many Excavating Evils you ran in your Priest deck. Was it one or two? One. Okay, okay. so it was a one in six chance there. It was a one in six chance. And I had two Holy Novas. Yeah. Still didn't draw the other one. I'm gonna had, I had two Circle of Healings. Didn't draw either of those either. Oh, man. Well, Very brutal. If you uh, if you ask yourself, are you willing to bet on a one in six chance? You're always gonna say no. So, yep. No, I I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be too bothered by that. I nah. think that uh, I think you did well. I think you guys both played really well, and uh, I you absolutely can't. Like, that was not those were not easy wins by any means. Like the whole time, I mean, <laughs> you probably saw my face. I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. Oh, uh, that was an oh, excellent terrible. series, you guys. That was that was a great show. Um. All right, well, thank you very much for your words. Uh, we're going to take a short five-minute break, and then we're going to jump straight into our Chicks vs. Dicks Best oh of Three Challenge. And then we will see who truly is the winner. We'll be back <laughs> after the break.
Welcome back to Monday Madness, Chicks vs. Dicks, featuring the Grim Gamer and Gemini, with casters Josh Sampson and some fool that you really wish you weren't listening to right now. That's Hector Hal. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's get ready to go here. We are uh, about to go into our challenge. So, for this best of three series, Gemini and Grim were asked to construct... Two decks each, following the restriction of only using cards which had their assigned gender on it. So, in the case of Gemini, all of her minions and all of her spells, except for those which were indiscriminate, are female. And in the case of the Grim Gamer, he has a bunch of uh, ignorant dickheads. Um, so I'm... Uh, I'm very excited to see how this shakes down. Um, if you missed our first half, we had some spectacular games going on. I would definitely recommend you check out the VOD. Um, but players, do you have any uh, words of endearment for each other before we get going on our second series here? Uh, all I have to say is that Hearthstone is extremely sexist. Eight inches. Eight oh, inches. man, taking shots. Well, maybe uh, maybe we'll get some more uh, more female heroes in here. I would definitely like that. Um, but, uh, all right. Well, Grim, you going to take that shot? All right, then. Eight inches. Eight inches. <laughs> oh, dang, Grim. <laughs> I don't even know. Neighbor's gonna grow up to be one of those people with those lifted trucks. Are, are you talking about the subway sandwich you had for dinner? Oh, oh, oh. oh man, anyway, smack anyway. talk is real. All right, well, why don't you guys cue it up? And I think we are uh, just about ready to go. <laughs> Players, That's go ahead much. and deafen yourselves, mute your mics, and we are in to the series. Mr. Sampson, what do you think will be the result of this challenge? Um, I am very excited to see how this plays out. I think this is a very fun twist on the normal Hearthstone, and we'll get some creative decks out of both players. All right, so what happens if Prince Malakir puts a female legend in his deck? Um... Banned? He can't play it. Uh, let's see here, though. We seem to be in wild. Malachi. Yeah. Um. I don't know if that is intentional. Let me uh, let me check in here. With uh. Absolutely. We may have to call for a regame. Um, for it. Yes. Yeah. Alright, we're going for it. Um, we'll just make a quick clarification that, uh, it's Monday Madness. Sometimes things go wild, and we roll with it. Um, um my cut. This is Matt. Yeah, we're just, we're just rolling with it, so... Yeah, that's what I was saying. That's all I'm saying. Um, if a wild card is drawn, players can use it. Who the fuck cares? Um, All right. Let's see here then. Um, yeah, this is interesting. I think you just hero power and pass. I would have actually done the same hero power pass, uh, the exact same last turn, and not played the the axe. But the grim gamer wanted that axe out. Got to show us eight inch axe. 
removal for that axe outside of a certain wild card, which I guess could somehow get into the deck, uh, which is Sabotage. Um, that's a card I, I wish hadn't uh, been phased out. I like that card. But uh, I don't know what these decks we're seeing. Um, obviously, our players were assigned to build the decks, and we're seeing from the Grim Gamer uh, some warrior shenanigans, a bunch of uh, big dumb men with big dumb weapons and uh uh sorry that play makes perfect sense Okay. Um, all right. So we've got the opportunity here to play uh, four and a one. I think that's the way to go here. The uh, deck that we've seen here. This is um, a very nice build on the rogue. And obviously, uh, you see cards like Sap and Fan and Knives, which have male and indiscriminate characters in them. But conflicted characters, casting characters. So. Um, female rogue and you're cutting out a little bit here hector just so you are aware thank you for letting me know am i any better now yeah much better all right i was just explaining that uh despite the fact that there is a male blood elf hanging out on the sap card he is the one sapped so it is just fine uh that we, she is playing that card and in the case of journey below we couldn't quite tell uh if that is a dude or a chick so we said you know what allow you guys can both play it Makes sense. What do you think of the Grimm's options here now? I think they are awkward. But I like it, like his line of play. This sets up for him being able to Grim Patron Revenge next turn. See a cult master. How do you feel about this aggressive cult master? Just played onto the board. Um, it's, I mean, it seems fine. It's just awkward knowing that from our end, knowing that Grim is on the Grim patron deck. Yes, absolutely. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that whirlwind. Is a very popular card in Grim Patron is a female card, so he cannot play it. Uh, he does have Inner Rage, he does have Revenge, so what he can do here is he can generate some patrons. Now, I think the axe play is beneficial here. This line makes sense for, from my perspective because it lets him clear completely next turn. <laughs> Spicy! I like that. So this is interesting because this is sort of a pseudo heal card that Rogue can play, and I think we may actually see experimentation with that in um, in. Oh man, we are going wild here as a shredder appears. Will it be taken? Um, let me smolt Sneeds. Oh man. I love that sneeze, but we're seeing a Huckster. Huckster probably follows your game plan better, um, even if there's potential value. But yeah, I, I really like the inclusion of Violet Illusionist here, as healing is often one of Rogue's weaknesses right now, as it really can't negate all the damage it takes from its hero power. So playing the Illusionist gives you the ability to take these nice big swings at minions and just get no recoil from it. All right, then. Looks like, uh... 
<laughs> looks like uh, Gemini journeyed below and discovered a uh, decrepit old huckster and said, you know what? You are bent to my will now. Just do what I say. And now there is a dick playing for Gemini. That was a very good play by Grim. And you get to execute here as well. I'm going to make a third patron. And or kill the... the hu- uh, kill Gemini's little bitch, so to speak. <laughs> um, now, interesting here. Do we actually see... With the sap, patrons can be... Cl- Pit Fighter. That is, uh, that is another impactful card that is of the female gender. So very very good card. That one. Uh, now I now, think, I'm curious why she killed that one instead of the the three three. Because she's gonna snap. No. Sap. She has to sap it here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, patrons are so expensive to play out, mm-hmm. and. Especially given he has the redundancy of another patron in hand, he just doesn't really want to be playing that. So this is uh, this is going the way it needs to for Gemini to take this win. Shield block, not really what she wanted to steal there, but it, it's at least it's cycle and uh, permanent life gain. Oof! What is that? Yeah, I like a shield leading off with shield block here. Seeing what you draw on the most likely just playing the beast. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why we don't play Prince Malkazar. Because, what is that card? Why is it in your deck? Why would you rather have it? Anything else? Look at that! Look at that! Garbage. Leroy Jenkins in Patron. Ay, ay, ay. Now, I like Leroy and Patron. This is sweet because you can play Leroy and then revenge and kill all the one ones. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> Fair enough, though. Now, and you saw Grim's decks in the previous segment. Yeah, yeah, I know he loves him some face. That is true. Um,. This is actually going to be pretty punishing for Gemini, though, as she doesn't have a clean way to get rid of this beast, which is going to stink. <sighs> Playing the shield block. Probably Gemini taking discover- the hand motions like she realized she should have shield blocked first to draw a card. Ooh, Ooh and that's Sylvanas. Yeah, you want that Sylvanas. Now, hmm. you don't really want to steal the beast with it, though. Because the beast has a beneficial death rattle for you. So what I expect we're going to see here is the beast running into that 5-6. Unless, yeah, there's no execute. And then it being cleaned up through some means. Yep, I agree. Huh. Interesting turn here. You have the ability to see more patrons. Um... But if you do, okay, you're only yeah, you're only do. I mean, much if he plays patron, enrages, attacks, and revenges, like he's left Gemini with. Oh, interesting. Two. Yeah. I mean, I would have liked to see him. Uh, Hero power over uh, commanding shout there. Okay. Now he could have just been looking for a cycle into something else, and he's yeah, absolutely. While a loss condition is certainly getting burned out, uh, considering that cold blood is not a factor, and we've already seen an eviscerate, I'm uh, I'm happy with this play. Now, random knives doesn't quite work. Uh, Colt Master's trading into the, the play here. Uh, as, as stealing a patron is good. And challenge patrons. Ooh, Gaddison Jouster. That is 
That is neat. Uh, inside that thing. For Very good draw by Grim. Finkel, after being rescued by beautiful ladies, is more than happy to join their cause. Um, Grim here is sacrificing a patron, which, ooh, with that commanding shout, it's actually going to be pretty good for him. Now he just needs to do this correctly and make sure he kills the cult master first. But he's going to be able to answer that quite effectively. Or crowning. So it looks like he is just going to clean up the entire board of Gemini here. Very good play on Grimm's part. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is, this is, yikes. Rogue just can't deal with patrons. I mean, Blade Flurry has been destroyed. Uh, Vanish is not really a card that is played. And, I mean, the rest of Rogue's board clear outside of double spell damage is... Okay, no, but this is good here because his board is full. He's not getting more patrons. So, um, good, good pickup by Gemini. Very good. I know that. Uh, so she has an Assassin's Blade, which I kind of feel needs to be developed to start clearing off these patrons. Um... The Gadgets and Jouster wins the Joust, it's going to challenge a patron. If it loses, it's going to make another one. So, think you sap a patron here, or are you going to take this risk? All right, let's go. Yeah, given that Malkazar, oh, I think that was a dangerous one to do. Now that's just going to feed the fires of the patrons. Oh, yeah, def boy. definitely not looking great for Gemini here. Yeah, yeah. Very, very, very good pickup by Grim. Oh, God. Oh, oh, why? He just he just didn't need that. I mean, it, it was good already. Oh, really? You gotta play the Leroy? That yeah, he, he can run his patrons into the 1-1s. One oh, fine. Does he have the board space? Yeah, he has the board space. Okay, okay. Okay, fair game. Calling me out here. Fair, Fair play. That's uh, that's actually pretty nifty. I like that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I see Gemini recovering from the situation. Wow, oh, that frothing berserker. So she can sap the frothing berserker, and she can put a couple bodies on the board. And play whatever. Sunwalk, Sunwalker's good, uh, but it, it prevents her from developing bodies, so the sap absolutely has to go on that frothing. You, you might just lose the game on the spot if it doesn't. Though, can you can you do the math? No. Yeah, I don't think you can take that kind of damage and win. You kill off the Leroy here, and uh, instead of a patron? I don't know, it's tough. Like, either way, you're taking all the damage. At least by killing the Leroy, you don't get to just get Cruel Master Leroy into the Sunwalker. Yeah. That's that's gonna be nasty. Oh, even nastier. It's uh, Blood to Ecker. No, I guess they just do the same thing. This means he can actually Cruel Master the, uh, the patron. God. And kill it just with a patron. Wow. Absolutely vile. I guess they don't call him the Grim Gamer. And making more patrons. That is just... Everyone is in here. Here I... Ugh. Oh man.
Yeah, there's nothing Gemini can do to just not be dead here. Everything goes face. And you are cutting out, Hector. Cutting out. Is this any better? Oh, much better. Much better. All it was was just bumping the mic. Man, that is uh, that is strange. I'm gonna look into that. But, uh, hopefully, it's not too much of an issue. Grim Gamer takes the first game with a bunch of drunk idiots. In uh, in in, no, we can't we can't say it. that's not manly. Drunk Everyone idiots. did in fact get in there. Ay, ay, ay. Well, let's see here what else the Grim Gamer has prepared. And let's see if, uh, if Gemini's decks can handle it. Oh. That's a warlock. Ugh. Alright. Reckless Rocketeer. Man. When we initially did testing of this... Nade played that card against me and uh, actually applied some lethals with it. Oh, man. It's like a Leroy, just out of nowhere. Yeah, and you never expect it, especially when you're like, oh, they're just playing female cards. There's not going to be any charge. Charge minions? Oh, yeah. Blech. Look at this disgusting start from the Grim Gamer. Yeah, he's just playing... What looks to be just tier one zoo, pretty much. Well, not we're gonna try. It's not too. It's certainly disgusting. Um, well, I mean that's pretty cool. Ah, oh. seeing those two cards in the hand, the uh, the crazy color flipped your axis, hit for fifteen. Those were the glory days. All right, well, Gemini looks like she's just playing out these two drops. I think removing is much better here, yeah. Yeah, the Lord Jirax is kind of awkward in this matchup because you don't ever actually want to play it. <laughs> You're right! Yeah. Actually, much rather would have a 3-15, even a 15-3, than be able to be burned from 15. Exactly. And then this probably possessed villager. That is a slow turn for Grim Gamer, which is what Gemini needs, especially with a pickup like that. Woo! Look at that. Good tempo play. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Well... Unfortunately, Abusive Sergeant plus Possessed Villager is quite silly. And that's going to come down here on the 4-3. Yes, but, interestingly, is he will choose to order the Knife Juggler first. So, in doing that, he actually gives a better minion to Gemini than he would have otherwise. I was wondering if we'd see that. Oh, no. Oh, come on. Come on, Grim Gamer. 50-50. Oh, no. That is just ridiculous. Oh, how disgusting. Knife juggler. Just He's just throwing them up in the air and hoping they land. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I, no credit. No credit to the Grim Gamer. Fuck you, knife juggler. My God. Nonetheless, definitely uh, setting himself up for a situation where that can occur uh, was was a good play. Uh, now, how, how do you feel about this? Uh, he could have, uh, her, she, pardon me, Gemini could have played a Sorcerer's Apprentice alongside this. Do you think there was any value in doing so, or do you think that would just be throwing cards away? I just think it's throwing cards away. I think you want to be getting value with, like, at, like actually letting you enable more spells off of it. Yeah, I feel like, like it just dies to the abuse of Sergeant. Balls to and or knife juggler pings. Yep, absolutely. Ooh, nice use of the crazed alchemist there. Well done. 
It doesn't. It, it's gonna go away on a turn, isn't it? No, it stays. Ooh. Yeah. That's um, very nifty. Okay, so I think that Cabalist's Tome is your out here. Uh, finding a Blizzard or a Flame Strike, and applying it next turn. But she's going for the Arcane Intellect play. Um, perhaps she's running set cards. She might be running. Uh, or, uh, that, that's a good. That's a good draw. No, where's it going? Is it going on the knife juggler? I mean, it has to. I think. Hmm. All right. Well. <sighs> Shadow. That's not a card you see very often. Um. Uh, but I guess you got to fill it in with something. But. Man, getting. It, The defender is so good there. Disgusting. I'm watching right now. Yeah, I'm a guy. I'm lucky. Ooh, Ooh very good draw. It's good. It's good. Um, how do you like it applied? I think you target it onto the 1-1 one -one in the middle of the knife juggler and the abusive sergeant, and then you ping the juggler. I agree. Yeah, I think that's definitely the right line of play. Uh, but this is also uh, running the same amount of damage. It's just not killing something, but it is lining you up to Blizzard. So perhaps she's saying, "Okay, I know that my only out of this game is drawing one of my two Blizzards. So I gotta just take this one and nine, and play to win here, and line it up for a better Blizzard." Which uh, I, I think is totally fair. Oh, yuck. Grim Gamer and his Leroy's. <laughs> Loves them. What can I say? Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure he knows that 100% that it is a nice block. Yeah. And, uh, and even if she does draw Blizzard, which she doesn't, she could Cabalist home. Or no, nope, that wouldn't do it either. Yeah, she's it's just dead. Is there a Firelands result? Fireball face. Can't recall if there's any five drops. No, she should Firelands portal herself. I mean, you know what? This is this is the format's fault. This is absolutely. I mean. What a bunch of knuckleheads just be like, oh, let's see here. We'll give you this one. We'll give you that one. Okay. Here. Oh, that's a dude. That's a dude. Look. Zoo has a bunch of dudes. Patron has a bunch of dudes. Uh, I think she did a really good job constructing these decks and playing them out. She's pretty good. Um, but at the end of the day, at least she deprived Leroy of his life. But he still has chicken. Was that a BM really turn? Hope guys lances the face. <laughs> that was a BM turn. Oh, oh, please, Cabalist, into a secret. Give me a nice barrier. Oh. Play the Spellbender. Uh. Well, you, you, could, you could go for the ping. Ice Lance play. <laughs> Take advantage of, uh, of the overconfidence and maybe attempt to steal a win here. Unfortunately, the wrong target. Big dumb idiot. <laughs> and this is what we get for giving crap about playing Lord Jaraxxus and how it's bad in this matchup. Oh, 
Right. That will be the conclusion of our second series. Let's get our players back in here and get some quick thoughts. Oh, man. Mike's on. Let's see here. Who've we got? We got you, Gemini? Yeah, I'm here. We got you, Grim? Yep, I'm here. Start with Gemini. That was uh, that was a little bit unfortunate. I, I definitely liked what you did with the decks. You, uh, you had some good cards going there, but... I mean, this is pretty good. Patron's pretty good. Uh, how would you feel if... Um, should should we see a return of this challenge? Chicks also got access to all of the dragons. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Sad. I'm I'm not a good deck builder. I'm, I, that's not my claim to fame. Like I, <laughs> I I I did my best, and I I knew that I was going to lose this portion of the challenge. So I was I was okay with that. I, I didn't want to lose, but I mean, I just had accepted that that was probably going to happen, considering the shitstorm I had. Um, I'm, I'm, I won the best of five, and that's all that matters. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think you could say you put the shitstorm on Grim in that case. But, yeah. uh, how's, how's it feel, Grim? How's it feel to play some, uh, some of your, uh, title name cards? You face Jaraxxus. That's how it <laughs> Everyone, get in here! Oh, Everyone, boy. pile on! <laughs> what a bunch of knuckleheads! Um, all right, well, do you have uh, do you have any thoughts on this uh, that you want to share, Grim? Uh, no, not really. Just well played, GG. Yeah, well played to both of you. Thank you both uh, a ton for being here. Um, thank you for thank having. Thank you for me. being patient with my lateness. I'm so sorry again. Yeah, you know, life happens, and uh, and we deal with it. Um, but uh, thank thank you guys for, as always, putting in the hopefully, communication, putting in the hopefully deck Hopefully I made this feel worth it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it was it was wonderful. It was, it was uh, wonderful having you. And, um, yeah, uh, I hope you guys had a good time. And, uh, I thanks did. For being. Thanks for having me. It was a blast, man. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you, Josh Sampson, for uh, answering the call to arms and arriving yeah. at the last second to save thank the day. You. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, ran random text message out of nowhere, and then I'm here. And it was a blast, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank, thank you so much for being here. And uh, as always, let's, uh, let's thank our producer. Let's thank Mr. Nade for putting everything together on the back end. Hooray! All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Nate, do we have a do we have a little bit of a tease for what's coming next week? Oh yeah, I could pull up that graphic. You can uh, you can go ahead and explain that. Okay. So, should everything go according to plan, we've got something very special for you coming up. We have THL Hearthstone's edition of Dungeons and Dragons, oh, and this is going to be the most unique challenge that we'll feature on Monday Madness, I think, ever. Because how this is going to work is we're going to have two players playing cooperatively against the Dungeon Master. And they are going to have two decks. And in those decks, they are going to have to follow certain deck building rules as far as what cards can be played. But then there's also a lot of rules of application. So you can't cast a spell unless you have a spellcaster minion on the board. You can't equip and swing a weapon unless you have a weapon-wielding warrior on the board. Um, now, in the case of the Dungeon Master, the Dungeon Master has three dungeon bosses, and these bosses have to be played if drawn, and the objective of the adventurer is to not only survive the dungeon, but to eliminate these bosses. We'll be posting the rulebook on Facebook shortly, but we are super excited to bring you this really unique challenge. Um, and I believe we're going to have our players Cutthroat and Lemur as the adventurers. And uh, yours truly will be the Dungeon Master. And, would, there uh, be anybody would there be any yelling moms in the background? Yelling moms in the background? Going to have to get back to you on that. But I think we may <laughs> see the appearance of some, um, some sharpened forks from Lemur. Uh, you never know what the dishmaster has conjured for us. But uh, 
Thank you all for watching the show. Uh, I hope you had a good time. I certainly had a blast. I think we had some really awesome games this evening. And uh, we will be seeing you next time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard, on the next Monday Madness. Take us out, Nate. Bye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>